Well, we're eating chili. Fall is about, we're about to fall into fall. Is what we I'm are. Saying. We are. You know what that means? It means sweaters and all those really yummy, cozy things. And color blocking happens to be the hottest trend of the fall season right now. And Orly Shani is here to show us how we can make our own color block sweaters. Make them unique and for yes. less than a quarter of the price. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of those things. So color blocking has been a trend that's been seen a lot on the runways because designers love playing with creating different shapes and textures on the body. And it can create really flattering shapes on us, yeah. which is one big reason why designers are doing it. And now as we're coming into fall, we're seeing a lot of really cool versions in sweaters and sweater jackets. And it brings just a little bit of excitement, a little bit of color, a little bit of variety. And I know you're into fashion, Simone. Obviously. Please, can well. we just take a moment? Will you turn around so we can show your hair? Obviously, you're Look at this is the coolest you hair guys. you ever. <laughs> if I if we, I could DIY that, that would be a goal in my life. Would you wear one of these? Absolutely. I would wear this one. I'm going to take it with me. Okay. I'll finish it for you. you we'll go. finish it in yep. segment. Yep. So this is this is very easy to do. Um, there's only a couple things that we actually need. The first thing is going to be the sweater that you're wearing, your main sweater that's going to have everything added onto it. The next thing is going to be a donor sweater of some sort, whether it's a sweater that maybe has some holes in it that you're not wearing anymore, mm -hmm. but you love the color, or maybe something that even has sentimental value that, again, isn't in good enough condition to wear, but you want to incorporate it in some way. Cute. One thing to consider, though, is the weights and the sizes of the sweaters. So you want them to be as similar in size as possible, that way things fit. Okay. When they're replacing, you know, you can patch it on in a way that kind of makes sense. Or you want it to be slightly larger because you can always trim off the excess. If it's smaller, you're out of luck. Okay. So you always want it to pick that. And you also want to try to focus on doing lighter weight fabrics added on to heavier weight fabrics, not the other way around. Because if you had a really great, like, mm. soft, slinky kind of cashmere sweater and you added, like, a heavy fleece panel, the whole thing's going to get, right. you know, tweaked. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to look good. Okay. So, right, so what do we do? Okay. So what we're going to do is you're going to you're going to go and find some sweaters. I have a million here, so I'm just going to show as you're looking at your sweaters, you want to decide on what you're going to cut. Okay. The ribbing is always a really easy place to cut. It might be um, hard to see here because this is such a bright color, but when you're cutting, this is a really great way to get started. You're going to just snip to give yourself an entry point. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go down. Why the uh, band-aid there, Orly? Thank you. Thank you for Mark, noticing. She may have hurt herself She's been sewing. In the I, she she was didn't have her with thimble. I, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I um, my nail Excuse my nail me. split in half down the middle. Oh. What? You guys. I thought you snipped it. No. Why did that happen? Okay. No, I have no idea. Oh but it hurts gosh. really bad, and I'm we afraid to it's going to break. Segment. Seriously, Kim <laughs> has some solution for that. I know it. So if you guys can see, what I did is when I snipped in, it gave me an entry. Eight. Then I went down, and now I'm getting really evenly as close to the ribbing as possible. That way, when this comes off, it's a perfectly even piece. Okay. So I would cut all the way around. Now, another thing that you can do is if you realize that it wasn't perfectly straight, like you cut it kind of haphazardly, and you're like, uh. yeah. another thing is a rotary. These are really great, these rotary blades. Use them a lot in sewing. Use them a lot in kind of different crafting options. If you want to do it, take a... Uh, your rotary blade and take a ruler and you push down really hard to give yourself a guide and now you're just gonna cut. Cut through there. Mm. Is that what they do at those clubs? <laughs> I, mi I missed the joke. Yeah, What's that. the joke? Yeah. The rotary club. Oh! I didn't I never What's knew what goes on the in those rotary things. Club. What's a rotary club? Oh. You know what? Oh. You know what, Orly? It's okay. Orly, <laughs> thank you. That was that was the the daddiest of dad jokes he's oh. ever had. <laughs> just, just okay. The bad well, dad joke. As you can see, this is now perfectly even. We're able to use it, so you can always trim it up after the fact. We're gonna move on down. Hey. Or can I ask you something? And what if? You, how do you know what colors are gonna go well together? That's a great question. If you are someone with a fairly artistic eye, then this is something you can just decide. What colors do you like? What complement your skin tone? Okay. What do you think looks cool? If you're not fairly artistic and you want some reassurance, you can either reference a color wheel like this mm -hmm. which is going to show you different combinations that work oh, so you'll cool. follow the guide you'll say okay I'm gonna start with let's say this orange color these are the colors that work or even better and even easier I would recommend googling use the Google machine and type in like color blocking combinations purple 
Mm. And it'll bring up hundreds of designers that have created beautiful pieces color blocking with the color purple. And it'll mm. give you ideas. So you can do either one. Okay. So guys, as you can see, this was my little cuff right here. I slid it right on. This is the cuff that I wanted to use. And now this is an item that I actually would recommend either using fabric glue or using a needle and thread because the issue with using a sewing machine is that it's very difficult oh, to get your yeah. tension just right that it won't pull or create pressure right. and distort kind of the shape. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. You know, like a cashmere is so lightweight and then mm -hmm. you the pressure of your sewing machine can stretch it. So this is something where I would go in, I would put a little bit of fabric glue and then go in and re reinforce it with a needle and thread so it really stays in place and you could even do a cool color like that. So just Add in, glue. which actually pops that. Exactly. Do you know what I really love? That you leave the original sleeve, sleeve inside, so that's yeah. all tight, and then this I is love baggy. That. And even like this, this was the ribbing at the bottom of a gray of a green sweater, and I used it to create epaulets. And it's the same thing. You don't need to cut it to size. Put a little bit of glue, pop that on, stretch it, put the glue, and then trim after the fact. All right. So, so it's so very easy. It's just piecemealing. Cost of making one versus cost of buying one. This costs about ten bucks to make. Um, and we're seeing them for anywhere between like $50 and $250, depending on the brand. You know, they yeah, go, that's true. They're probably a lot higher yeah. than that, depending. You're right. Yeah. Okay. I love this. You can find instructions <laughs> on our Pinterest page on how to make these awesome sweaters.